Hey, this is Tim, Southwest Ohio Bees. Uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, on your way in or out. Uh, we appreciate that. At a recent conference, we had the opportunity, nay, the privilege, of meeting and uh, having a conversation with the Dr. David Pack. He is currently the Director of uh, Research and Education at Better Bee. You know that uh, company very well, I am sure. He got his doc doctorate. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Pat. He got his doctorate at uh, Cornell University, uh, studying under no other than Dr. Seeley. Yes, he learned from the best. Um, and uh, Dr. Peck is very well versed. And if you've ever heard him speak, you know he's uh, the authority, and I believe he is. He's done a lot of research. And uh, he has studied, uh, so uh, if you get a chance to uh, listen to the gentleman, I suggest you do it. Uh, he's very good. Um, we had uh, one specific question, specific question <laughs> uh, for Dr. Peck. Uh, as a new beekeeper, you can get intimidated by treating mites. Uh, raw mites, uh, you hear, you hear everyone talk, um, uh, there are strips, there's Apivar, there's Formic Pro, uh, there's dribbles, there, there's vaporization, oxalic acid, uh, a whole host of treatments of miticides for, uh, your varroa mites. Um, what do you do? Um, it's really intimidating, uh, whether you're a brand new beekeeper or a fifth year beekeeper, um, it can be intimidating, uh, to know where to go, what to do, uh, know what to choose to get started to, uh, treat these pests. So, uh, this is a question I had for Dr. Peck. Uh, let's see what, uh, the good doctor had to say. Today with uh, Dr. David Peck. Uh, you are an authority on Varroa mite. I try to be. You try to be. I, I, I masquerade as one. I have been to many of your seminars, uh, many, several of your seminars. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been very impressed with uh, the information you've shared with us. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of newer beekeepers, they're intimidated by treating for Varroa mites. Yes. Okay. And uh, they hear that various treatments, if you use it too much, it just doesn't work anymore. Right. And then they hear about oxalic acid. Well, that doesn't happen with oxalic acid. Right. So why use anything but oxalic acid? Right. Tell me why I should use anything but oxalic acid. So there's there's this very natural, very human thing that beekeepers often do where you say, what's the best miticide that I can get? What's the easiest miticide? What's the miticide that's never going to cause resistance? And so once somebody will give you an answer to that question, you just say, well, I'll just use that. That's just what I'm going to use every Absolutely. time. Absolutely. The reality is that the mindset that I so desperately try to get people to understand is I do not have the best miticide because there's never going to be one. What you need to get is a series of miticides that you have a good understanding of that you can deploy in your hives at the right times to knock the mites down if they're at this level in this temperature when the bees are doing this or at that level at this temperature when the bees are doing that. You know, if they're building up in the spring or if they have no brood in the middle of the winter, you're going to be reaching for a different uh, weapon in the arsenal is the language I like to use. So for for a novice, yeah. you're saying some, whatever they feel comfortable with. Learn exactly. that particular mindset. Start, work with your mentor, figure out what your mentor's mite management plan is. Hopefully your mentor is keeping their mites in check, otherwise maybe you should get a better mentor. <laughs> but if they've got their mites at least more or less under control, figure out what they're doing. They're probably not going to be using all the, what, seven or eight different approved miticides and treatments. So if they're using formic acid and oxalic acid, use that. If they're using Apivar and Hopguard, use that. They're all great. They all do 
their jobs. You just have to know what those jobs are. So if you've got somebody who's, who's totally new, maybe they don't have a mentor, although I always recommend finding one, I do think that some of the easiest, um, uh, sort of the lowest barrier to entry for Midasite use is the Apovar strips, because they're straightforward. You just have to read the rules about them. The uh, oxalic acid dribble method, because there's very few safety threats to either the bees or the, the person who's, who's making use of it. Or uh, the formic acid pads, which can be a little bit more finicky, but they're very, very effective. So if you're only going to use one thing, you know, one of the two organic acids would probably be the one I'd steer folks towards. But again, that, that mindset of, he said formic pro is the best one, so I'm going to use that. Or he said apobioxyl oxalic <laughs> acid is the best one, so I'm going to use that. Nope, that's, that's absolutely a misunderstanding of how to manage it. It's the same way that if I wanted to keep you healthy, I wouldn't give you nothing but Tylenol or nothing but antibiotics or nothing but you know cholesterol medication. It's you figure out what your problem is and what the best tool for that particular problem. So there is no one size fits all, one mono size no, fits all. Absolutely not. And I don't think there ever will be. I don't think we're going to come up with the perfect miticide in five years. I think it's always going to be about understanding what options there are. But people very naturally get overwhelmed. They get confused about the fact that they've got all these different miticide options, and so they think, oh, I don't know how all of them work, so maybe I just won't treat for mites at all. You've got to say, I'll start somewhere. I'm going to start with oxalic. I'm going to start with formic. I'm going to start with apivar. I'm going to start. It doesn't really matter what you start with. Um, and then once you've got that under your belt, you can then turn and start thinking about what the next option for you to add to your toolkit or add to your, your next study weapon, add and to your learn arsenal. what the the options are for that. Study and learn is always my advice for effective beekeeping. Okay, you heard it here, <laughs> Dr. David Pack. How to There's treat? There's no perfect miticide, and there never will be. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Pleasure working with you. Okay, I want to thank uh, Dr. Peck for his uh, time. He took out uh, a few minutes of his busy schedule at the conference there to, to speak with us. I uh, really appreciate that. I hope you got the answers uh, you were looking for. Uh, I know I did. So uh, work with your mentor, work with those around you if you don't have a, a mentor. Uh, find the uh, miticide that, uh, that uh, someone else is using near you. Work with them. Um, learn everything you can about a particular miticide. Start with that. Start with the, a single minus. Don't worry about all the list of different things. No matter what everyone says, don't worry about the entire list of different treatments. Find one and use it. Once you're comfortable with it, like Dr. Peck says, then learn another and try to put that in your arsenal as well. So for now, this is Tim, Southwest Ohio Bees. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a fantastic day.